We have four terrific uh, panelists with us, all very experienced. Um, going from uh, my right, we have Dr. Gazim Badri, who is the president of Afed University for Women in uh, Khartoum, Sudan. We have uh, Professor Heba Nasser, a professor of economics at Cairo University, former vice president of Cairo University. She told me it has 250,000 students uh, just now, so just to give you a, a, an idea. Um, uh, on, on my left, uh, first is Mark Michael, who is a writing instructor and CBL instructor at uh, the American University in Cairo. And uh, to his left is uh, Nellie Corbell, who's the assistant director of the John D. Gerhardt Center for Philanthropy and Civic Engagement at the American University in Cairo. Um, so uh, thank you all for, uh, for participating in, um, in uh, this panel. We're looking at uh, the question of um, civic engagement and its connection to employability. Uh, in many parts of the world, of course, youth, uh, do you think we need this? Uh, can you hear? Yeah. Um, as in many parts of the world, in the Arab region, uh, youth unemployment is extremely high. And in fact, uh, the research indicates that it's higher in the Middle East than it is any, in any other region, even though every region is, uh, is experiencing very high percentages of youth unemployment. Um, even amongst university graduates, I'm sure you all have the same experience, but unemployment is reaching uh, record numbers. At the same time that uh, in the Middle East, they're experiencing uh, what's commonly referred to as a youth bulge. So the percentage of young people uh, relative to the entire population is very high, and then youth, and then unemployment amongst that po youth population is very high. So it's a major issue uh, for all institutions dealing with young people in uh, in the Arab region, and universities feel a particular responsibility um, in uh, attempting to educate them to have productive professional lives after they leave the university and. In, in the context of very high um, unemployment. Why is the issue of civic engagement in the Arab region so critical? Why does it seem of such high interest uh, at this particular time in the Arab region? In order to understand why the discussion around civic engagement is so important for the Arab region at this time, it's important to consider the past of the Arab region. The pedagogies of the past characterized by a focus on the instructor, memorization, passive engagement from the student, largely based in the classroom, and focused on the quantity of output as opposed to quality, have contributed in some way to the current state of the Arab region. They have directly contributed to the problem of the skills gap within the region. The students, as an output of the educational system, are not able to fulfill the demands of their employers. With the state now declining, with the role of the state declining, more and more the social pro problems of poverty and hunger and, uh, or, and unemployment, and they are more, people are more aware of them and they are in the neighborhoods and in, in, in formal sector and with the IT now it's also uh, people are aware of that so we cannot isolate universities from solving such problems because the problems are much more apparent with the much more real now or much more seen now with uh, the dual system we have with the very competitive um, uh, very competitive education and labor market system and then the traditional one so the universities we have the youth there, and the youth are the engine for, for change. And they are sometimes the reasons for change. So, uh, and we have the professors, we have the knowledge, we have the resources, and this has to be anyhow matched to, apl to be applied to the societal problems, which have been the cause for so many uprisings in the region. Um, 
universities represent, in my opinion, microcosms of societies, and especially the public universities. And so when we think of university, we think of students. There's also professors, there's also the local community, and they represent in themselves all the social ills and assets that you can find in the Arab region. So in a way, they act like social labs. So by integrating civic engagement in the Arab region, in universities, in a way you can test and pilot methods in addressing these social ills and building on the assets of the Arab region across um, all the different problematics that we all know we have. Now to turn more um, towards the particular topic of the relationship between civic engagement and uh, employability. What skills do you think students learn through civic engagement, through community-based learning, that are useful in, the, um, in their search for uh, employment? And what is it that employers tell you they're looking for that you think is gained? What skills are they looking for that you think is gained through um, civic engagement specifically? Civic engagement can help that by um, teamwork, community participation, uh, problem solving. The problem is there on the earth, so they have to solve it. Um, by um, knowing more and more about the societal problems and uh, knowing more and more about the people, so uh, uh, when they try to apply their, their uh, methods of, uh, of, I mean, academic or the academic methods, they will adapt them to uh, the societal uh, norms and behavior in, in each area. Civic engagement allows them to have a framed experience within an academic environment of how do you get something done with all the steps that this process would involve and how do you plan these steps and how do you not necessarily jump and get to the goal right away but that might take a little bit longer. And so I think that em employers, the feedback that we get from employers, from our students, is that they say they're very process oriented and they understand the steps and what it takes to get something done. So I'm just wondering if there's experience here on the panel of, 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 uh, of bringing employers into the conversation uh, so that you actually know what you're preparing, that you're preparing your students for, um, for the needs of, of um, the employers in your city or in your region. Um, to what extent have you done that? Well, recently you had a, uh, about six, seven years ago, we introduced a, a new program within the School of Management, it's Management Information Systems. And when we did the curriculum, we invited the business community, uh, and workers from banks, from uh, companies, from different kinds of businesses, uh, to come and sit with us in the curriculum development committee in order to tell us what kind of And many of the employers also are interested, actually, in uh, changing the curricula, as, as you said. And they are um, financing and uh, they are contributing to initiatives in several faculties for um, having extra curricula of students. Uh, we know many companies in Egypt that are financing extra curricula programs uh, to make students learn more about languages and community participation and the internal internships in their in their there are companies who are doing this in the uh, university itself are there other barriers in terms of sort of organization management and scale that you see are uh, prohibiting a kind of wider implementation of CBL specifically or civic en other civic engagement models in the region that might um, help prepare students better for employment as well? Nelly? Um, well, in the Arab region right now, I think that one of the big barriers as well in our work is the elephant in the room, which is political versus civic engagement. Um, we, as we try to push forward this movement of university civic engagement, taking the time to really distinguish between the political and civic engagement types is actually, let's say, 50% of our work when we try to work with any sort of, of university in the region. 
I can think of at least two other things. One is um, two other challenges. One is, um, as it's been described to me by people who are living and working in the region, that the education system, the higher education system, and the K, and the um, elementary, and, uh, the primary and secondary education system are are still quite rigid, and um, and traditional, and uh, so. There's a growing recognition from the conversations that I've had, at least, that uh, there's a need for um, real education reform of a very fundamental, fun fundamental way. And that, at least according to President Anderson at AUC, she sees, um, sees uh, CBL and civic engagement as uh, a, a kind of wedge in the door of education reform, because to the extent that that can be accepted as uh, within the universities, even in small numbers of courses and, and departments, uh, it's basically making an attack against the rigidity of the, of the system that has existed um, for a long time. So one barrier is certainly that kind of traditional and, and rigid education system. Um, the other, I would think, in some countries in the region would be um, the availability of community partners. I mean, in some countries, uh, civil society is stronger than it is in other countries in the region. And so where you have vibrant civil societies, you, uh, you have many potential partners with which you could work. Where civil society is very weak, it means that there's probably fewer, there are probably fewer potential community partners with whom you could uh, you could develop programs and projects which you want to sustain over a long period of time. Where there is obstacle, there is also opportunity. I think one, one barrier or one obstacle that we haven't discussed, though, is the retention of qualified faculty. You know, this is a region and some of these universities and specific departments will have high rates of turnover. So how can you get a faculty member to commit to this methodology, which requires practice, which requires reading, which requires a lot of effort, and, and, and incentivize them to go further?